It's like being dead for 90 minutes, but you're eating popcorn. Hello, beta testers. <laughs> this is the video game Grand Theft Auto. The types of people censoring and downgrading media want you, even in a game like this, to observe traffic laws and stop for red lights. Even in a game called Grand Theft Auto, there are dozens of driving simulators that cater more specifically to a drive like a normal person fantasy, but they want you, in a game like this, to drive normally. For years, on this platform, I've been tormented by these types of people. And when I ask you to subscribe, it's because I'm finally overjoyed to see someone after all this time. You understand, right? Please, help people like you and me find one another. Join the Discord, create a little community here, and make sure that nobody has to know that kind of am I the only you know what I mean as unbearable as these people who are censoring things are I would never wish the horror of being in their company on anybody not even an enemy I genuinely pray that many of these pronoun censor happy people never realize even a portion of what they're actually like because we have the luxury of taking a break from them but the only break they can take from themselves and in the statistics they've been throwing at me like it's my fault am i being entitled only to what i pay for snow white sushi squad and sony are in an identical spot right now ethnic girl boss feminists who don't need no man accompanied by seven diverse and politically correct entities of different irrelevant but they're gonna tell you anyway sexual identities a thrice delayed uninspired always online looter shooter full priced but we got a battle pass and we want you to buy our ugly microtransactions make it make sense rocksteady and lastly, Sony, obsessed with censoring exclusively attractive women and blood in your products, yet paradoxically planning to go all in on live services against steep competition that's had years in the way of head starts and much more appeal with less pussified designs than anything that Twitter and its goblins could mix up if they had a fucking to their head. What's been demonstrated so far on these entities' behalf permanently costs the interests of fans. I say again, fans, the most willing people to begin with, whom they've disgraced, opting for BlackRock's ESG score instead. The high score, if you will. A statistic, if I'm not mistaken. Delaying these products won't change sentiment, especially when what people take issue with will continue to be ignored. A well-paid trailer house won't save these messes with marketing at this point. And Sony's on a path to catch up to this boneheaded bankruptcy speedrun with soon-to-be-shut-down live services of every variety. As we move forward, I encourage you to look back, see just how much Sony is censored, and let that influence your decisions moving forward. Since jiggly titty scary. Like and subscribe, no way this is getting monetized. Snow White's biggest issue isn't that it's yet another exhaustingly politically correct representation fest that will compromise the overall entertainment capacity and fun factor of the movie. Uh, it's a big part of it, but that's not exclusively what the problem with Snow White's problem is that it's yet another ethnic girl boss feminist movie in a long line of girl boss movies that have never said anything interesting. All message, no substance. Live service or games as a service games are landing on the exact same runway at Oversaturation International Airport. More of the same annoying formulaic dribble that wasn't scratching itches to begin with. What's more, all live services are only as good as the amount of people you can trick into playing it at launch because without pay picks for your always online game servers, games shut down. I guess nobody will be asking the amount of dedicated web you should have to a server.
But the funny part to me is that Destiny 1 launched 10 years ago and it still had more to offer, more modes, more variety in locations, loot actually worth chasing than half of these games be hobbling out with these days. That minimum viable product didn't work the last time, but this time, this is the time. So we end up with games that feel more like an afterthought than anything worth actually spending time in. We just saw this with Marvel's Avengers, Gotham Knights, two games I've covered fairly extensively on this channel, and both of them telegraphed exactly the same lackluster bullshit. If they didn't suck, and the team working on them didn't suck, then there would be something worth holding out for. But they did, and they weren't free titles, so buying now in the hope that it'll get better later is a lifeline that's already done a decade's work in postponing a well-earned crash. Disney whistleblowers leaking just how cult-like things are run over at the Disney Ranch. We already expected it'd be bad, but we could never have imagined that they'd have gotten rid of the voice within their staff of reason. Voices that could have prevented billions in loss, but these voices didn't align with their progressive, modern audience. Forgettably, low-quality bullshit is all they're churning out these days. Ironic, isn't it? It's always inclusive and diverse unless you disagree. Then it's a meeting with HR with how you're not a good fit, you're not a team player. But if you ever been in the midst of enough talent, you'll know that the people capable of making your product resonate the most are not team players. They effectively got rid of the people who would have been able to create a debate and explore through different approaches how to make something that mattered, something that wasn't out of touch. Maybe to you crotchety, saggy, dusty, wrinkly, loose, dried up, fake developers, designers, producers, in name only, with your I wonder what my cat is up to, just kidding, you have a in camera on your phone to, you know what I mean? In short, studios full of one type of person can create media for one type of person. And for us, this out of touch dribble isn't even so bad it's good. It's just a waste of our time, blood and tits. In a virtual space in media is exactly the type of outlet people need to help restrain themselves when they're forced into the midst of the same type of sensor happy pearl clutch and broom up their ass dweebs like y'all that they gotta rub shoulders with every day. This is for your safety. This consultation is for your safety. Appealing at a glance is powerful in advertising. Why do I need to say this? I'm sure you're aware of the fact that you don't get a second chance at a first impression. You want to pull, not push. Sex sells, ugly repels. But ugly and sexy never pertain exclusively to looks. Good trailers and advertisements often factor in competition and understand what people like to hear and see. It certainly doesn't help that the only thing extra looks at your product can sell is the insufferability of people working on your projects. I often say it costs nothing to shut the hell up because reinforcing how out of touch you are with comments and showcases that are the opposite of what people want to hear does the opposite of selling your product. Please like and subscribe, comment, or correct me below. R remind people that not only did the founders loudly and publicly leave Rocksteady before the game was delayed yet again, the last game Rocksteady released will be nine years old when Sushi's uncooked squad ass, always online, served up. A full price game with a battle pass full of resources and pay to skip and all oh, grind and time gates and all that good stuff I'm so sure. Uninspired skins though. For your battle pass. What if Harley wears this extremely conservative Wonder Woman outfit? What if King Shart is dressed up like Superman? That's not creatively bankrupt right? Yeah. 
This attack on everything deemed edgy or offensive robbed these projects of soul and humanity, which is positively hilarious because we will be teaching AI to do better, to relate better to what we ask for, you know, give us like the definition of things, at least based on most of us when we when we are thinking of a certain thing. We can have rich stories and bad people in those stories, ignorant asshole pricks that represent the very real and unmistakable evil present in our world. It'll make the story memorable. It will paint parallels to life and help, you know, it'll resonate. What am I? God damn. The funniest part of all of this to me is how I must be whatever word if I don't like it. I brought up Catwoman last video. Remember that? Talking about how, remember, remember the end, a movie could just be bad. But now if you don't like it, you must be sexist and racist. God damn. No edge, message heavy, and objectively low quality. You can't expect people to regard these as the same. Believe it or not, people's eyeballs work. Why are the women ugly across all media? Because casting directors are admitting to seeking ugly standard challengers. And in the case of video games, they'll actually pay an attractive actress for their time just to downgrade them, flatten that chest, ugly them up, cover them up. Why? Because they're trying to condition your kids. Don't mistake me for a will someone please think of the children, dude, but they can't be trying to condition us. Woof, man. I'm just going to wake up one day and go, wow, this is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You know, who's going to stop them from conditioning your kids to you? Not when you keep funding this. Some of the terms that these people like to frequently use are modern and modern audience. It doesn't exist. Catering to this imaginary audience is quite frankly why the woke era is coming to a thankfully unceremonious end. Sites like Kotaku, Polygon, The Gamer, and other identity-obsessed Twitter goblin activists will take their fight to the localization front. And the long story short there is they're censoring games into an American version for release in the West. All because you didn't gatekeep grifters like these from slithering into your industries and allying with corporations to make things unprofitable. Japanese referred to this as a Sony check back in the day when these games just, oh, they were too racy, please. In an era where AI will make more appealing alternatives available with the press of a button an inch away from people, Disney, Sony, new Rocksteady, you'll deserve the reward of your cut corners, incorrect assumptions, and restrictive agendas prohibiting you from making an enjoyable experience that appeals unironically to humans. It's called art. Sutherland had the nerve to openly call consumers uneducated and in need of a steamy historical revision, according to Wokey McJokey, honk honk, flop. And now, having learned nothing, Battlefield is planning a reimagining. When it flexed its update to creative and Unreal Engine 5 shift, we were treated with a taste of Fortnite if it cared about TDM. Something tells me when first person mode drops, they might. Epic's currently working on a Mario Kart inspired racing mode and if inevitably Fall Guys dies, I wouldn't be surprised if it went all in on a Mario Party type mode with all your skins and all your emotes. Fortnite and Genshin Impact are shining examples of life services done right, and trust me, I've learned to recognize the kinds of studios that can make Final Fantasy XIV kinds of experiences that players consider themselves privileged to experience. Last night I'm playing Call of Duty after a new season dropped and tried returning to Strike, a remastered map that had been in older Call of Duties. The map was fine, but with the reduced pace in this newer COD, a game that caters to camping, mini map not working the way it has historically, forced SBMM, keeping me out of modes that might make this map flow better with with 10 people in it instead of the default six half the time it can't even fill up the lobby because it just needs to make sure that the, the the worst players are on my team and taking out good movement and functional maps from cod is like taking the dinosaur out of jurassic park i say that a lot these days about a lot of these properties sushi squad 
in the end, people didn't even want to play as this ragamuffin team of dumbasses. Why didn't you make a Batman and Superman and we can play as all of them game, but we're using our abilities and our powers like you didn't Arkham. But hey, that ship sailed. I'm supposed to let it go. The lack of consideration for fans and almost horny desire to deny them what they want. You're putting ugly bitches on the box, man. Look, in the end, we're going to make the new content and the AI will make better content than you. And the cream will rise to the top. I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. The cream. And let me point. The cream. The cream. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. But the cream will rise to the top, oh yeah. Mario Mario will step over your cold corpses without so much as a because instead of robbing their fans of what they want, expect, and love, they attend to and grant them the service any paying customer deserves. When is Metroid 4 coming out again? Oh, when it's ready. A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. If it's not fun, why bother? But in the West, you got such different mentalities. Respect the legacy. <laughs> Respect it. We didn't expect you to care. We just didn't expect you to actively pursue bankruptcy. To the beta testers, QA is their job, not ours. If you're good at something, never do it for free. Thank you for being you. Please go judge my wish list. <laughs> Please get it all. <laughs> and I love you. Sorry this one got bloated. I promise the next one will be funnier. <laughs>